Greetings, I am Rajkumar Parashari and I love doing physics. I would like to continue solving and analyzing physics portion of NEAT 2021. In problem number 6, convex lens of focal length 20 cm and a concave lens of focal length 5 cm, these are placed coaxially. Separation between the two lenses is D. Now as per problem, a parallel beam of light that falls on A leaves B as parallel beam. That's interesting. And we are supposed to find the distance between the two lenses. Now here is a parallel beam of light that is incident upon the convex lens A. These rays are refracted. Had concave lens were absent, these rays would have met at point P on the principal axis. According to the problem, after refraction from the concave lens, rays again become parallel to the principal axis as shown over here. Now you see, if we look at definition of second focus of the convex lens and the first focus of the concave lens, you'll notice this point happens to be the same. The second focus for the convex lens and the first focus for the concave lens they happens to be the same. Now as per definition this distance got to be 20 cm and this separation is 5 cm. From the figure we should be able to conclude that d plus 5 equals to 20 cm and this implies that d is equals to 15 cm and hence option v is correct. In this problem an electromagnetic wave of wavelength lambda is incident on the surface of a photosensitive material. The work function of the photosensitive material is negligible. This is interesting. And we are supposed to find the Broglie wavelength of emitted photoelectron. Now let's proceed. Electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic wave can be thought as made up of large number of photons. The energy of one such photon is given by h nu or hc by lambda now if this photon if this photon is absorbed by one of the electron then we know that this electron comes out of the surface the kinetic energy the maximum kinetic energy of emitted photoelectron is given by half mv mix square this is equals to hc by lambda minus phi naught phi naught happens to be the work function of the material. According to the problem, work function is negligible and hence the above relation can be rewritten as half mv max is square is equals to hc by lambda. This can be rewritten as p is square by 2m equals to hc by lambda or P equals to square root of twice m hc by lambda. According to the problem, lambda d happens to be the de Broglie wavelength of the emitted electron. It should be given by the expression lambda d is equals to h by p by definition. And this is equals to h divided by substitute this value of p is square root of 2m hc by lambda now squaring both sides let's see that what do we get as lambda d square equals to h square upon 2m hc by lambda now h and h will cancel this implies that lambda d square is equals to h by 2 mc into lambda yes. or lambda equals to 2 mc by h into lambda d square and hence this is the correct option in problem number 8 
we are supposed to relate physical terms of column 1 with the corresponding formulae in column number 2. Let's try. Over here, the first term in the column is the drift velocity. The drift velocity is given by the expression V is equals to E tau by M is to E. So, E matches with R. The next term is electrical resistivity. The formula of electrical resistivity is rho is equals to E by J. And hence, B matches with S. The next term is the relaxation period. And the formula happens to be the resistivity rho is equals to N by N E squared tau. Here tau is a relaxation time. And this implies that tau could be rewritten as M upon N E square rho. So C matches with P. The next term is the current density. Current density J is given by the expression N E A V D. So D matches with Q. And hence this is the correct option. In this problem, a radioactive nuclei XZ undergoes a spontaneous decay in the following sequence. And the sequence happens to be X changes to B, B changes to C, and C changes to D. Now when X changes to B, something interesting happens. The atomic number Z decreases to Z minus 1. And how this is possible? And this is possible within the nucleus when proton of X changes to a neutron by emitting a positron along with the neutrino. Thus, when X changes to B, beta positive or the positron is emitted. During the transition from B to C, let's see that what is really happening. The atomic number changes from Z minus 1 to Z minus 3. So the atomic number changes by 2. This is possible in a case when alpha particle is emitted. Now look at the final transition from C to D. In C to D what really is happening is Z minus 3 the atomic number changes to Z minus 2. Atomic number is increasing by 1 and this is possible provided neutron changes to a proton by emitting a beta particle along with the antineutrino. And hence sequence of transition should be the positron followed by the alpha particle and then the electron. And hence the correct option happens to be in this problem there are four resistance wires of equal length, equal area of cross section and the material also happens to be the same. Resistance of these four wires should be R equals to rho L by A. Now if these resistances are connected in parallel between points A and B, the way I have shown then the resistance of the combination between point A and B should be equals to RAB is equals to 1 by R plus 1 by R plus 1 by R plus 1 by R full inverse equals to R by 4. According to the problem, the effective resistance of the parallel combination is 0.25 and this is the effective resistance and equals to 0.25 and this implies that the resistance of each of these wires should be equals to 1 ohm. Now next part, what would be the effective resistance if these are connected in series? Now these four resistances, now they have been connected in series between points P and Q. This is point P and this is point Q. They have been connected in series. The equivalent resistance of the series combination, that should be equals to R plus R plus R plus R equals to 4R. The value of R is 1 and hence R PQ equals to 4 ohm. So this should be the correct option.